In this video I'll be looking at some different Fuji and Nikon lenses and seeing how well they work for infrared and ultraviolet photography in terms of whether they have an infrared hotspot and how much ultraviolet light they pass and I'll also look at whether they have focus shift from visible light to infrared and ultraviolet. So the lenses I'll be looking at is the 80mm EL Nikkor the Fuji 50 to 230 mm zoom, the 50 mm EL Nikkor, the Fuji 27 mm pancake, the Fuji 16 to 50 mm zoom, and the Nikon 70 to 300 mm VR lens. So, this image that I've got up here, you can see the 80 mm EL Nikkor in the middle and the 50 mm EL Nikkor on the left. And we'll start with the 80mm EL Nikkor. So this is checking for um, hot spots and exposure. This is what the frame looks like in visible light. This is in infrared. And you can see there's no hot spot there. And this is ultraviolet. And let me just check my information for that. So the um, infrared and the visible light one were both taken at f8 and ISO 200 and this ultraviolet one is taken with the flashes on full power they're on near minimum power for the other two um, ISO 400 and f5.6 um, because the flash tends to put out a lot less ultraviolet light than it does visible and infrared so you need to um, much more sensitive settings to record the ultraviolet light and you can see that this is a sort of reasonably bright at those exposure settings so that's um, the 80mm EL Nikkor is quite a good lens for ultraviolet photography and here we go on to the focus test so this one is visible light you can see it's focused around the 8 this is infrared you can see the focus has shifted back a bit the 8 isn't quite as sharp as it was in the visible light image. And then in <coughs> sorry, in ultraviolet light again we've got the shift focuses shift backwards a little bit. And the focus shift makes it difficult if you're focusing something in visible light so you can see through the viewfinder of your camera or whatever. And then you move start taking photos in infrared or ultraviolet and the focus has shifted backwards, so the less focus shift the better. So that's the 80mm EL Nikkor. Next we'll go on to the Fuji 50-230mm XC zoom. And this is at 50mm, so visible light we start off with. Infrared, there's no hotspot visible there, so that's quite good. And then ultraviolet. Um, if I just check my details for what that was taken with. Um, so the visible light and infrared shots with this lens were both at f8 and the flash near minimum power at ISO 200. Um, this ultraviolet shot, flash full power, um, f4.8 and ISO 1600. Uh, so you can sit, probably tell from that that this lens isn't very good for ultraviolet photography, but in infrared it doesn't have a hot spot so it should be fine for infrared work let's move on to the focus tests so you can see here the focus is around sort of between the 7 and 8 in visible light in infrared the focus has moved further back it's nearer the 6 and in ultraviolet light again we see it's very dark and the focus is actually here it's um, around the 7 so it's not actually changed that much from visible light so we don't get much focus shift but because it lets through so little light in ultraviolet this lens isn't really suitable for ultraviolet photography let's go back oh, I've got the picture of the lens here so you can see what it looks like as well 
and at the long end of the Fuji 50 to 230 millimeter zoom. So we've got visible light here. Infrared, still no hotspots, so it's good for infrared work. Ultraviolet, again, we've got, um, let's just check the exposure details for that. The infrared and visible light were both at F8, ISO 200, and flash near minimum power. This was ultraviolet is f6.7, which is the fastest aperture you can get at the long end of this lens. ISO 1600, and you can see the image is still very dark. And I think this is the um, JPEG image we're looking at here. I think the raw image was actually even darker than this. Looking at the focus shift, so this is the visible light. You can see it's between the seven and the eight there. Infrared focus has shifted further back. Um, ultraviolet, very difficult to see. If anything, the focus might have shifted slightly forward from visible for that. So you can say that the Fuji 50 to 230 millimeter lens is fine for infrared work, but it's not any good for ultraviolet light because it passes so little ultraviolet light. Next, move on to the 50mm f2.8 EL Nikkor N version. Not sure if there's any difference between the N and the old version in terms of exposure, but here we go. So, this is the um, visible light image. Infrared, you can possibly make out as a very um, slight infrared hotspot on this lens around here. But I haven't actually seen that um, in real life use with this lens, but then I am mainly taking macro photos with this rather than landscapes. And ultraviolet light, you can see, let's just check the exposure details on that one. Ultraviolet was f5.6 at ISO 400, and the infrared and visible ones were f8 at ISO 200. So it's given quite a good exposure for ultraviolet here. And then move on to the uh, focus tests. So the focus is on around about the eight. Focus moves slightly further back. If you look at, let's say that six, it's more in focus in the infrared image. So slight amount of focus shift in infrared. And again, the focus is around about slightly further back in ultraviolet with this lens. So it's quite a good lens for um, ultraviolet work and it's fine for infrared as well. Now you need to remember with these EL enlarging Nikkor lenses, you do need to use a um, focusing helicoid and there will be manual focus and manual stop down and that sort of thing. The Fuji 27mm lens next. There's a picture of it on the left here. That's compared to the 16 to uh, 50mm zoom at the same focal length there. So you can see this is a pancake lens. Let's move on to the tests. So this is visible light. Infrared light, you can see it's got a very bad infrared hotspot. Um, let me just check what aperture that was taken at. Uh, that's at f8. So obviously the more you stop down the lens, the stronger this hotspot gets, but it's um, sort of all, even at f2.8, there's still a hotspot, but it's just not quite as um, well defined as that. You can, it is possible to get rid of this hotspot in post-processing, but it's not particularly easy. <clears throat> Um, obviously it's better to uh, use a lens that doesn't have a hotspot and then you don't have to try and get rid of it. So you can say this lens isn't very good for infrared really. And then ultraviolet and this was quite a surprise to me. This lens actually works quite well for ultraviolet light. Um, this exposure was f5.6 ISO 400. So that's the same as the um, EL Nikkors before and they possibly gave um, a slightly brighter exposure than this lens, but um, it's a very good performance for a uh, modern autofocus lens.
as they tend to be very poor at ultraviolet. And now we are looking at the focus tests for this lens. So we can see the focus here is around the 9. In infrared, focus is further back. Ultraviolet, focus is quite a lot further back. So you, while this lens works for um, ultraviolet photography, unfortunately the um, does have quite a bit of focus shift. But um, in good light you can focus manually or use autofocus in ultraviolet with this lens. So let's move on to the next one. It's the Fuji 16 to 50 millimeter zoom. And there's just a picture of it so you can see what it looks like. So this is a visible light, 16 millimeters. Infrared, there's no hotspot visible. This lens does actually have a very slight infrared hotspot, but um, it's very large, sort of takes up maybe sort of this area. Um, and it's not well defined, so it's very easy to correct in post-processing. You can actually uh, use something like corner fix to have an automatic uh, fixing of the problem applied to your images. Um, so infrared is fine with this lens. Ultraviolet, um, let's just check the exposure details. So the infrared and visible light ones were both F8 ISO 200 flash near minimum power. Ultraviolet, this one, is flash near maximum power, flash at maximum power. Um, F3.5, so it's with the lens wise wide open, and ISO 1600. So you can see we've had to really boost the um, sensitivity to try and get a visible image here. So we can say it's not very good for ultraviolet work. And this is the um, 16 millimeter focus tests round, sort of between eight and nine for visible light we've focused. For infrared, we can see the focus has shifted further back. And for ultraviolet light, we can see the focus hasn't really shifted very much. It appears pretty much the same as it did in visible light. So quite similar to the other Fuji lens, really. The um, 52 uh, to 30mm, um, while it's very good at not shifting focus for ultraviolet, the amount of ultraviolet light pa passes makes it pretty much unusable. Now moving on to the 16 to 50mm lens at 50mm. And so we've got the visible image here. This is the infrared image. Again, you can see there's no hotspot. And um, this here is the ultraviolet image. So the um, visible infrared shots were F8 ISO 200, flash near minimum power. Ultraviolet is f5.6, that's the lens wide open at its long end. ISO 1600, flash maximum power. Um, still gives a very dark image, so not suitable for ultraviolet work. Focus shift, so we've focused sort of around the 15 maybe here. Infrared we can see focus has shifted further back. Moving on to the ultraviolet focus. Around the same, possibly moved slightly forward. But so, same there as we had at the wide end of the lens. And then moving lastly on to the Nikon 70 to 300 millimeter VR lens. Just got an image of it there. And I didn't do the focus tests with this lens, but I did do the exposure and hotspot tests. So this is the visible light image. This is the infrared image. You can see there's no infrared hotspot there. This is the ultraviolet image. 
Uh, while this looks quite bright, what you're actually getting here is a lot of infrared and visible light leak. Um, you can tell that because of how bright it is around the edge of the image that wasn't illuminated compared to how bright it is in the middle that actually was illuminated by the flash. And this image was f4.5 ISO 1600 with the flashes on full power whereas the infrared and um, visible light were both around f8 with the flashes near minimum power and ISO 200. So again we can say this lens is pretty useless for ultraviolet photography. And then I also shot the lens around 200 millimeters for a comparison against the um, Fuji lens, um, which goes to 230 millimeters. Right, I think I probably got the images in the wrong order here. So this is the visible one, and you can see I didn't actually focus it here, but infrared. Um, doesn't matter that it's not focused really, you'd still get an infrared hotspot if there was one and there isn't. And then ultraviolet, again we're getting um, contamination from visible and infrared light here. This was f5.6 which is the lens wise open. Uh, the other two were f5.6 as well actually in this instance. Um, ISO 800 and flashes on full power while the infrared and visible were ISO 200 with flashes near minimum power. So again we can say that this lens is fine for infrared work but it's no good for ultraviolet work. And um, that's it really. So for the Fuji it seems the 27mm lens is good for ultraviolet. Um, the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 230 millimeters are good for infrared but useless for ultraviolet um, and the enlarging lenses are pretty good for both ultraviolet and infrared but of course you have the problem of um, mounting them with a focusing helicoid and being manual focus having to manually stop them down and that sort of thing but the Fuji 27 millimeters um, working in ultraviolet that was quite a nice surprise for me so i hope this is helps if you're interested in using some lenses for fuji with ultraviolet or infrared photography i'll put a link at the bottom to this blog post and also some other posts about uses of fuji lenses for infrared thanks